I am recording this on Easter Saturday. I don't want to be making this video right now. However, it's not often that we get a chance to talk about a massive vulnerability on Linux that actually affects desktop users as well. This is not a drill. Update your system immediately. A backdoor has been injected into a project called XZ. So a bit of context. XZ is a set of general purpose compression tools. And if you pay even a little bit of attention to Linux, you've probably seen them at least a couple of times. For example, prior to making use of LZO compression, Snaps made use of XZ compression. Also, you've probably seen a tar.gz file. This is a tarball making use of gzip compression. Well, there also exists tar.xz files. These are tarballs making use of XZ compression. There's also BZ2 and a bunch of others, but that's for a separate video. Now, even without looking into this, how do we know this is very serious? Well, everybody and their dog has released security reports basically immediately. For example, here's the one from Red Hat. Urgent security alert for Fedora Linux 40 and Fedora Rawhide users. Here's one from Debian. Here's one from OpenSUSE. Even Arch Linux, who is notoriously bad at reporting any problem on their distro, they have a security report out. And they're not even directly affected with what we know as the vulnerability. And of course, there's also a CVE. CVE 2024-3094. Now, I've done videos on how CVE scores are kind of a mess and don't really mean much. If there is a justified 10.0, this is a justified 10.0. And as is often the case with serious vulnerabilities, this was first reported over on the open source security mailing list, in this case by Microsoft developer Andres Freund. So, the malicious code in question is in 5.6.0 and 5.6.1. If your distro has an older version, nothing to worry about. At least from what we know so far, those are the only affected versions. Now, if your distro did install one of the affected versions and then shipped maybe an older version or patched it out with a newer version, we're not entirely clear if that means you are safe. Security researchers are still examining what's going on, examining how it injects itself, and at this stage with preliminary findings, it seems like you are probably safe with a downgrade or upgrade. However, I would recommend keeping an eye on what's going on. If you're in a very security-dependent scenario, just do a clean install. There is a slight silver lining with this backdoor. 5.6.0 only goes back to February of 2024, so most distros out there are simply not affected whatsoever. Most of them have something like 5.4. I think 5 or 6, in, somewhere in that range. Something that's just not a problem. Primarily affected distros are rolling releases like Arch Linux, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, Gen2, Fedora Rawhide, Debian SID, and potentially some versions of the early access Fedora 40 build and also early access builds of Fedora 41. Since it isn't entirely clear the extent of this exploit, Red Hat basically just says, delete Rawhide. Just stop using it, we'll resolve the issue, we'll get a package deployed, and then go back to it afterwards. And you know what? I can respect that stance. Now what's curious here is how the exploit actually got shipped out to the distros, because if you look at the git repo by itself, the git repo has some weird artifacts in it, but the repo isn't malicious. You can run the repo and not have the exploit. You might be wondering then, how did it end up on the distros? Well, the distros kind of played themselves because the distros don't usually build off of the git repo. Instead, they build off of the release tarballs. So this is broken down into a seed and activation where the seed is available in the git repo, but the seed by itself doesn't do anything. It's just there. It looks a little bit weird if you start to examine the code base. In this case, the exploit was embedded into a binary test file, but it just doesn't do anything by itself. And then in the release tarball, there was an extra bit of code that caused the exploit to activate. 
This is just another reason on the endlessly long list of reasons why distros need to stop building off of tarballs. Just build off of the git repo. Yeah, it's gonna take a little bit more time. But this problem would have been completely avoided if you just built off of the git repo. So then, this injects an obfuscated script to be executed at the end of configure. This script is executed, and if some preconditions match, it modifies builder slash source slash lib lzma slash makefile to contain this right here. This is what is injecting the binary. When expanded, it becomes this, leaving out the pipe into bash, which is always a good thing to be seeing. It turns into this. This is the very obfuscated backdoor. After deobfuscation, it looks like this. It doesn't really help you that much if you don't know what you're looking at, but this is what is causing the backdoor to happen. So what does this actually do? Well, the resulting malicious build interferes with authentication in SSHD, which is OpenSSH, via systemd. SSH is a commonly used protocol for connecting remotely to systems, and SSHD is the service that allows access. Under the right circumstances, this interference could potentially enable a malicious actor to break SSHD authentication and gain unauthorized access to the entire system remotely. <laughs> Remember how I said this is a backdoor? I don't just mean like a little snooping around backdoor. No, no, this is why it's 10.0. There is one very important thing though. Not every distro is affected equally. OpenSSH does not directly use libLZMA. However, Debian and several other distributions patch OpenSSH to support systemd notification, and libsystemd does depend on LZMA. Again, this is another reason why distros shouldn't be patching things downstream, and they should be shipping what upstream has so they don't add additional problems that... <laughs> otherwise wouldn't exist in the project. Arch Linux being one of those distros, Arch does not directly link OpenSSH to libLZMA, and thus this attack vector is not possible. You can confirm this by running this command here. However, out of an abundance of caution, we advise users to remove malicious code from their system by upgrading either way. This is because other yet to be discovered methods to exploit the backdoor could exist. This is the key point. We don't entirely know if OpenSSH is the only target. We know that OpenSSH is the most logical and straightforward target. However, this was just discovered like hours ago, so it still needs to be fully examined. Ever since I mentioned the release tables, you may have wondered, how did some random developer inject things into the release? Wouldn't they have had to be the maintainer to do that? Well, not maintainer, but co-maintainer. So the person who started the project, they've been suffering from burnout for a couple of years now. They're on break right now. And basically, the co-maintainer was running the project. And the co-maintainer is the one who injected this stuff. Now, what makes this especially malicious is what they were doing in other repos. So this is over on OSS Fuzz by Google. This person was very aware that Google has really strong internal tooling, and this would have been caught basically immediately. So, under the guise of fixing a bug, they disabled the backdoor build from generating. This is back in 2023. This is when they were still putting the pieces together. There wasn't an exploitable build back then, but they knew that in the future, when they get around to exploiting it, they need to make sure that this is not going to happen on Google systems. Also, in emails to Fedora maintainers, they were very insistent that Fedora should update to one of the affected versions. This wasn't just like a one-off thing where the user's like, yeah, I'm done with open source. I'm going to cause some chaos today. No. This is a long, long plan that they've been slowly piecing together. Now, the funny part of this, I don't know if that's what you want to call it, is subsequently, the injected code caused vulgar errors 
and crashes in some configurations due to the stack layout different from what the backdoor was expecting. These issues were attempted to be worked around in 5.6.1. So they were trying to patch the backdoor to make the backdoor work properly without anybody noticing that they were trying to improve the backdoor. And it was all happening in front of everybody's eyes. And because nobody cares about some random compression library called XZ, Nobody even realized what was happening. Now, from what we can see here, the original maintainer was not involved. It was entirely done by the co-maintainer. If that is the case, it makes me feel really bad for the original maintainer. So back in 2022, this situation happened. So people were complaining because there wasn't really that much maintenance going on, and it seemed like the project had been abandoned. And this is what the original maintainer, Last Column, said. I haven't lost interest but my ability to care has been fairly limited, mostly due to long-term mental health issues, but also due to some other things. Recently, I've worked off-list a bit with Jiatan, which is the co-maintainer who injected the back door, on XZ Utils, and perhaps he will have a bigger role in the future. We'll see. It's also good to keep in mind that this is an unpaid hobby project, to which they got a couple of replies. First by Jigar Kuma, who we're not even sure is a real person. Editing Brody here. There is a lot of weird stuff going on with this Jigar Kuma individual. They showed up basically out of nowhere, demanded maintenance around the same time that Jiatan was getting involved in the project, and then was never seen again. A lot of people are starting to think that maybe they are a sock puppet account. With your current rate, I very doubt to see 5.4.0 released this year. The only progress since April has been small changes to test code. You ignore the many patches bit running away on this mailing list. Right now, you choke your repo. Why wait until 5.4.0 to change maintainer? Why delay what your repo needs? I am sorry about your mental health issues, but it's also important to be aware of your own limits. I get that this is a hobby project for all contributors, but the community desires more. Why not pass on maintainership for XZ for C so you can give XZ for Java more attention? Or pass on XZ for Java to someone else to focus on XZ for C? Trying to maintain both means that neither are maintained well. Finding a co-maintainer or passing the projects completely to someone else has been on my mind for a long time, but it's not a trivial thing to do. For example, someone will need to have the skills, time, and enough long-term interest specifically for this. There are many other projects needing more maintainers too. As I've hinted in earlier emails, Jiatan, once again, the co-maintainer who injected the backdoor, may have a bigger role in the project in the future. He has been helping a lot off-list and is practically a co-maintainer already. I know that not much has happened in the Git repository, but things happen in small steps. In any case, some change in maintainership is already in progress, at least for XZ utils. Breaking news, this literally just happened as I was recording. The GitHub repo for XZ has now been disabled. I was gonna say, don't go and comment on the repo, adding in a bunch more noise, making it harder for the security researchers, but I guess there's no point saying that now. I have had people asking me, what should I do? Am I affected? Am I not affected? What do I need to do? Update your system. That's your first step. There is also a script available at the bottom of the open source security mailing list. This one right here. This can detect if your version of OpenSSH is potentially affected. If it's not, just wait and see what happens and wait till your distro gives you more advice. Also, just turn the computer off go outside. Touch some grass. This back door will not turn your computer back on. If the computer is not online, it's fine. Just wait for things to be resolved and go from there. And that is going to be it for today. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this is actually serious or are some districts just over-exaggerating? They're not over-exaggerating, just I want to hear your comments. Give me the algorithm down below. Uh, anyway, if you really like the video, go like the video. And if you really, really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon and subscribe to and Libera Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And I'm going to go play the new PUE League because the league came out and I don't want to be making this video right now. <laughs> Bye.